Hello everyone, it's me again, Carl Irvin Sukim, and in this video we are going to learn about the International Committee of the Red Cross Movements. First, let's look at the ICRC mandate and mission. The ICRC is an independent, neutral organization uh, to ensure humanitarian protection and assistance for victims of armed conflict and other situations of violence. The ICRC also promotes respect for international humanitarian law and its implementation in national law. All states are bound by the four Geneva Conventions of 1949, which in times of armed conflict protect wounded, sick and shipwrecked members of the armed forces, prisoners of war and civilians. As you can see from the map, ICRC is present in most parts of the world. Now, what does ICRC do? ICRC responds quickly and efficiently to help people affected by armed conflict. As you can see, there are 16 activities performed by the ICRC. Uh, among them are addressing sexual violence, uh, performing humanitarian diplomacy, helping detainees, uh, working with the corporate sector, uh, helping in economic security, cooperating with national societies, and protecting civilians, among others. Now, all these activities are performed under the seven ICRC fundamental principles, namely humanity, impartiality, neutrality, independence, uh, voluntary service, unity, and universality. Let's look at the components and bodies of the International Movement of the Red Cross and Red Crescent. ICRC was established in 1863. It is at the origin of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement. ICRC humanitarian mission is to protect the lives and dignity of victims of war and internal violence to provide them with assistance. Now, the Federation works on the basis of the principles of the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement to inspire, facilitate, and promote all humanitarian activities carried out by its member national societies to improve the situation of the most vulnerable people. Let's look at the National Red Cross and Red Crescent societies. The National Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies embody the work and principles of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement in 189 countries. Together, all the above components of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, which is called the movement, are guided by the same seven fundamental principles that we have learned just now, namely humanity, impartiality, neutrality, independence, voluntary service, unity, and also universality. What are the governing bodies of the ICRC? There are three bodies that govern the movement. First, we have the International Conference of the Red Cross and Red Crescent. Second, we have the Council of Delegates. And third, we also have the Standing Commission. Let's look at each of the three bodies. The International Conference is the most important humanitarian forums in the world. The movement's supreme deliberative body is the International Conference. It studies and decides on measures to deal with issues of shared humanitarian concern. Next, let's look at the Council of Delegates. Now, representatives of all the movement's components meet to discuss matters which concern the movement as a whole. The council gives an opinion and, where necessary, takes decision on policy and subjects of common interests to all components of the movement. And the Standing Commission is the trustee of the international conference between conferences. The Standing Committee the Standing Commission prepared the International Conference and the Council of Delegates. It also deals with matters of concern to the movement as a whole. Now, let's look at the legal basis of any action undertaken by the ICRC. The four Geneva Conventions of 1949 and Additional Protocol 1 confer on the ICRC a specific mandate to act in the event of international armed conflict. 
in a non-international armed conflict, the ICRC enjoys a right of humanitarian initiative and enshrined in Article 3 common to the four Geneva Conventions. In the event of internal disturbances and tensions and in other situations that warrants humanitarian action, the ICRC also enjoys a right of initiative. If we look at the ICRC's mission statement, it states that the ICRC is to protect the lives and dignity of victims of armed conflict and other situations of violence and to provide them with assistance. The ICRC also endeavors to prevent suffering by promoting and strengthening humanitarian law and universal humanitarian principles. It also directs and coordinates with international activities conducted by the movement in armed conflicts and other situations of violence. What are the main obstacles to health care being delivered safely? Firstly, direct attacks against health facilities, patients, staff, and medical support. This is the situation that we can find in a dangerous situation. Secondly, obstruction of ambulances, patients, or health staff at, at checkpoints. Secondly, obstruction to ambulances, patients, or health staff at checkpoints for endless hours or day while waiting to be evacuated. Another situation is the discrimination. Discrimination often kills where the wounded belong to the other side was stopped from reaching hospitals. Armed conflict um, produces a situation where armed entry into health facilities is a serious threat to the safe delivery of health care become military target. If we look at the map, these are the states party to the Geneva Conventions and additional protocols. In conclusion, we can say that the ICRC is a movement composed of the International Federation and the National Red Cross and Crescent Societies. It is an international humanitarian organization mandated to promote and implement the international humanitarian law. The ICRC upholds the seven principles of humanity, impartiality, neutrality, independence, voluntary service, unity, and universality. The activities and legal basis of the ICRC are guided by the Geneva Conventions of 1949 and its additional protocols. And the ICRC is a main provider of healthcare in dangerous situation. I hope you learned something from this video and thank you.